So, what's the problem? Well, here we go. Um, none of these holes line up uh, consistently across the, the, the mating surface between the fuel tank and the uh, rest of the wing where it should be. And clearly the spar is not going to be the problem because that's a straight piece of metal. And you can see it sort of starts lining up at some point in time um, as you go down the line. So I had to think back, um, and here's where the problem is at. If you remember uh, my discussion around the flaps and the ailerons and how I needed to put those rivets in uh, within an alignment, this is simil a similar process. Um, this is uh, from back in January when I was putting the rear portion of the fuel tank on. Um, my interpretation of this process, uh, which was clearly wrong, uh, was that the jig was meant to, you know, keep the, the, the tank aligned for the application of the rear uh, portion of the fuel tank. And admittedly, it was very difficult to uh, get this to line up uh, for whatever reason. I just kind of was like, well, something's, I'll, I'll get it aligned here. These are the instructions. Um, I did the first portion correctly where all the ribs go in, but the second part I did not. So what I wound up doing was introducing a twist to the fuel tank that it was causing us to not be able to um, align the fuel tank correctly. Well, uh, and I'm, I'm killing time here. I figured I'd test the, to make sure that the tanks were still sealed and they were, so it wasn't a big deal. Uh, I had just this sliver of hope that I wasn't going to have to disassemble the, the fuel tanks, but that was not the case. Um, the only way to correct this is to remove the rear panel of the uh, fu of each fuel tank, which meant removing the rivets, removing the pro seal, and getting it back down to a clean state, and then following those next steps again. Uh, once this video posts, I'm going to go back and update the. Um, well, actually, I'll probably update the video that I posted in January of where I did it, so that I don't mislead anybody, um, because uh, this added. A fair amount of labor to the process. Um, uh, I, I kind of developed a, a method to do this. Uh, um, removing the rivets wasn't horrible because um, it's just like removing any other rivets, but it was cleaning the material that was potentially the problem and then also separating the uh, the rear portion of the tank uh, or the, the back plate there in the fuel tank from the, uh, the side skins. Um, putty knife works great. Um, and uh, then I also had a, uh, um, oh, what's it called? It's a, a, a chisel, a wood chisel that uh, worked really well. Because um, it kind of worked out the material and uh, as you moved along, you know, each piece would sort of peel apart. Um, where the problem really became interesting was, you know, the, the ribs in the back were also attached as well and how do you get them to come up? Um, so ultimately, I, I had to undo the, uh, the fuel sender plate to be able to reach inside. And you can see the fuel sender plates on the end right now. Um, but I'll ultimately need to take that off so that I can put some upward pressure on the tank and get it to pop off the, um, the rear uh, ribs or the rear portion of the ribs. Um, initially, I was using a, um, uh, uh, the Dremel for removing the... Um, the pro seal residue and uh, I was going through brushes at a pretty good clip. Um, I'd probably get two or three maybe rivets cleaned up and then I'd have to throw that away and start over again. Um, and actually here's where I'm removing the rear panel of the uh, fuel center or where the fuel center attaches, which is fine. I hadn't torqued it down so I, I needed to do some more work in that area so not a big deal. But once I got that going you can see I just kind of work it up um, the real trick on it was putting enough pressure on it to really have it to release, but not enough that it would damage anything. And uh, oddly enough, I mean, I managed to get this all the way apart without damaging anything. Um, there's a few rivet holes that are maybe a little bit bigger, but uh, overall it's, it's good. So moment of truth here is now that I had that back panel off, can I get the fuel tank on and align properly? And uh, so I tried it without that rear plate in. You can kind of see it a little bit in the corner there of the video where I'm standing right now. Um, it's just standing up against the wall. And uh, then I re 
repeated that and put it back on with the back portion of the fuel tank in place to make sure that it would properly align. And it did. Um, so, you know, at this point in time, it's all starting to make sense. Um, you know, lots of consternation. I talked to a lot of people before I went down this route. Now that yellow wheel you see on the uh, bench there is probably the lifesaver of the project. Um, just happened to be out on Reddit in the home builder section one day and was talking about uh, somebody had a question on it and that tool came up and it effectively is an eraser. Um, if you go get a pencil, it's, it's just an eraser, but it's, it's a little bit harder and it's on a wheel. And um, it does an amazing job of removing dried pro seal um, without damaging the underlying metal material. Uh, it doesn't take any of the metal off. Um, it, it just removes the pro seal itself. So uh, I'd get a little bigger drill out. I was going through battery, the cordless drill battery on uh, about 20 minutes. And so I, I needed a little bit more horsepower to, horsepower to get all this done. So at that point in time, you know, it's just off to the races. Um, I know what the problem is. I know what the solution is. Um, all I need to do is get through the, 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 the issue and uh, we'll be back in business here. Um, you know, shout out to uh, Scott out at uh, the airplane factory for helping me out getting the rivets sent over. Um, and, uh, you know, I got a couple more tubes of ProSeal that I ordered that came in. Uh, it was a little tricky getting that rubber uh, wheel spinning inside around the ribs, um, but basically I would take it as far as I could and then I'd go get the Dremel that I was using before and use, just use the brushes to be able to clean that up in the meantime. Um, and if you look at the, the, the date here, this is probably closer to my real time when I'm recording this. Uh, so this is just, I've just completed this project. Um, so, um, I, I mean, yeah, huge mistake on my part. Um, clearly it was something that, uh, I overlooked in the process, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, I learned a lot from it. Uh, not just what, you know, following instructions is critical, but also, um, gosh, if I ever have to do a tank, I mean, no biggie. Um, this really, really wasn't as horrific as it seemed on the surface. And this is just me. I'm just going back through the, uh, uh, tank with some, uh, simple green cleaning. Uh, th there obviously was a lot of, uh, dust and whatnot from the, um, uh, configuration. And, uh, I think this, yeah, this is the second tank. So you can see that the, the cap is still on uh, the fuel sender. So I just started straight away with that, that eraser. Um, so, um, now that I've got all that done, one thing that I did do and it was the, the racer and even the Dremel couldn't address was in the dimples. Um, there were still little traces of, um, the pro seal. And, uh, so I had a, a kind of a spring loaded, um, stopper for the, the, the drill bits and the, it's got a concaved end on it, very similar to the, uh, the dimple hole. And, uh, what I was doing there is just dry running it, uh, to remove any of the, um, the remaining pro seal that was in the dimple to get that cleaned out. It was just going to be the fastest way to do it. And it did a, did it a really good job. Um, so anyway, uh, on, I mean, onto the second tank, uh, now that I I've got a plan in place, um, this tank actually wound up being a little bit more challenging to separate the back from. Um, but you know, I picked up a couple tricks. I had a, a thin aluminum bar that, uh, I just basically pull up enough of the, the back skin there to put a new rivet in. And, uh, that gave me some, uh, grabbing points to be able to pull a little bit on the skin. And again, it's just, just enough to get the, the, the pro seal to stop adhering and it slowly separates apart. Um, cause once it gets going, it just kind of, it gives up and, and releases. So, um, that went actually just fine. So, um, you know, I, this is round two and I already knew what I needed to do and, um, uh, this took me eh, a little part, better part of uh, a morning or so to get it all cleaned up and uh, and going. Uh, the intention was is to get both tanks done over the weekend. Um, the uh, these are the angle break brackets that I had mentioned in the previous video that I thought were uh, knocking up against the the main spar. Come to find out through the investigation that we did. Uh, with the camera, they don't come close. Uh, it's, it's not a big deal. So round two, 
Uh, got the wing on the, the, the bench here. Uh, I'm just doing some final cleaning of the angle brackets uh, that needed to be done because you could kind of feel a little grit on them if, if, if you ran your bare hands over them. Um, the other thing, uh, this is a, a tip that I would recommend for anybody building these tanks for the first time. Um, these angle brackets don't attach to any sort of rib. Um, so you can, in theory, rivet these on dry and then flip the tank over and put the pro, the pro seal on the back side like I'm doing here and just create that seal barrier on this side. It's a lot less messy than uh, the way that I was doing it before where I was uh, putting a, a thin bead of uh, pro seal along the angle bracket and then gluing it down effectively. So, <clears throat> and the first time I took a shot at this, um, even though I had done this dry uh, without any pro seal and without riveting, um, I did have a little bit of a problem getting it lined up, um, and I think that's um, maybe where I was running into problems before when I was using the jig. Um, but I just took it back off and um, re, re readjusted it, and then I just like everything popped into place. All the clecos fell into line, um, and it was just a matter of uh, going down and putting every other rivet in, rivet in um, to get it all together. Um, I started at the bottom. Just because uh, if I'm going to have a problem, I wanted to have it underneath rather than on top um, because it's going to be a lot easier to identify the problem. But, um, you know, no big deal here. Um, I did notice in one of the blog posts uh, somebody was doing this exact process, not the second time, but on their first time. And they left the tank on the wing um, and the pro seal had leaked out a little bit. So it actually uh, effectively glued itself to the main spar. Um, so I made note that I definitely didn't want to leave it curing on the wing uh, because I, I didn't want to run into that problem. So once I got it all done, um, I put it back in the jig, but it's now, remember, all riveted together. Um, so there should be no twist introduced to the fuel tank at this point in time. Uh, I ran short on rivets, so I was only able to get one tank done. Um, I, the, this entire time, my neighbors have been out of town um, and they graciously let me of their garage so the the fuselage had been in their garage for two weeks while i was working on that anyway um so hopefully more progress on the other tank when we get to the next um video but uh, i think i'm over this hurdle and we'll have more the next time thanks for watching